The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This is Girls Talk Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw Dating, preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys, and broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now, your hosts, Christy Scales, Aisha Morrison, Nicole Hutchison, and Jess Navarez. Hello, Cowboys Nation. Happy Thursday. Welcome into Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. We've got Jess Navarez and Christy Scales in the studio with me today. Guys, it's been a minute since I've talked to I you all. I missed you guys. Well, not really. We've seen each other in passing, but that's that's pretty much it. But when you go from seeing each other every day yeah. to once a week, it's a little weird. It's a little weird. Feels it's like weird. a breakup low-key. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Terrible Feels one. a little weird. It's all right. We're back, though. We're back. We're back. Better with our... <laughs> Little shirts. Yeah. What do you Jazzy think? Our, today? Our, uh, Hold on. Shout out Jazzy yeah. for these shirts, oh, man. I was going to do that. Here Butter banger. Oh, here's my camera. So, banger and butter. Yes. Right? Let's go. Brian it this way. <laughs> this, this way. This way. Oh, that way. Banger. That's all right. Brian Anger, <laughs> Brian Anger. Yes. And butter, of course. Brandon Aubrey. Brandon Aubrey, because he's smooth. Very that, smooth, uh, like butter. Yeah, so Dak Prescott called him butter, and so. What, what do you have going on? Are you yeah. emulating him right what? now? Love that. Lining Love up that lining you. up your kick. Jazzy told me I couldn't kick, so uh, I just have to do this. You have to pra- practice. I did earlier. She saw me. Oh, I didn't she see asked, She said, kick right here uh-huh. before you got here. And I did. And she went. Ooh. Yeah, that kick was wild. It was not. <laughs> it was, I am in you jeans, now, okay? The, the, too, bad, okay. <laughs> too bad Tyler Bass didn't use that you for know? Buffalo. Uh, <laughs> you know? As soon as I it went wide jeans. right, I just went, oh, man, poor Buffalo fans. <laughs> <Yeah>. Just, <laughs> oh, that's rough. It was too reminiscent of the Scott Norwood that miss back in the yeah. Super Bowl. And, man, but what a great weekend of uh, games and mm-hmm. so much happening. The latest, of yeah. course, uh, Jim Harbaugh yeah. now officially uh, with with the San Diego, San Diego Chargers. No, it's all right. It's all right. Dang it. The yeah. Los Angeles Chargers. Five-year deal. Yeah. They just announced Five. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right there. That's yeah. crazy. Do you guys think he's going to – I was just mentioning a little bit before we got mm-hmm. on camera that he might possibly – I could see him bringing, his, bringing in his Michigan staff. That'd be – Yep. That'd be pretty wild. Why would you not I mean, at yeah. that point? Why would you not? That goes to the question. What you asked, what happens to Kellen Moore? Probably less of more is my guess. You know what? I'm going to take your mic away from you. <laughs> I'm going to take your mic I away mean, from you immediately. Uh, yeah, that, that's the thing. People don't people don't think about the dominoes falling and yeah. the families yeah. affected and Kellen and Julie and their little kids, yeah. you know. It's so. just interesting. Mm-hmm. It's interesting because when you think of a head coaching change, you think it's just the one person and then it ripples down. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But. Yeah. We've mm. got a, we got we got a little bit of news. Not really much going on around here, but of course uh, McCarthy is staying. We yep. didn't get a chance to talk about that because he announced it. Uh, well, they announced it after, of course, our podcast. Uh, I mean, what are y'all? You okay there? I'm sorry. <laughs> this mic. Might... It's all right. Uh, no, I just wanted to kind of touch on you know what's y'all's thoughts of uh, you better, know, us keeping McCarthy. Uh, kind of <laughs> like the benefits from that, maybe. Um, I guess you can say some cons from keeping McCarthy. He has one more year, one more year left on his deal. So what's, what's y'all's thoughts? Well, the pros are the continuity of yeah. the offense and the play calling and the same system, the verbiage, and uh, Dak in particular, but the whole offense not having to mm-hmm. learn uh, a new system. Yeah. And it's hard to argue against, you know, the top scoring offense in the yeah. league and uh, the numbers and the success uh, that, the offense had through the majority of the season the cons are selling to cowboys nation what's mm-hmm. different yeah you know That's fair. That's yeah true. and and uh same thing yeah 12 wins mm-hmm. for three consecutive seasons amazing hasn't yeah. been done in cowboys history that's you know high winning percentage yeah. all of that but here with the Cowboys, it's measured in playoff success and Super Bowls. And so until you get to the Super Bowl, they'll be answering the same question every year. I think for me, um, you've obviously seen the love that these players have for McCarthy. So it kind of goes back to what you were saying, like the consistency, right? Um, And, I mean, the players, are, of course, when the announcement was made, um, they went to Twitter posting that viral Mm -hmm. video of him in the locker room. Um, So, I mean, I I think that, 
players get that one consistency of getting, you know, that same system like you kind of mentioned. Uh, but you also get to see how McCarthy continues to develop Dak, right? Because you've seen the best of Dak this year. Um, and you get to see what he does with a guy like Trey Lance as well. Um, you obviously know that McCarthy's really good with developing quarterbacks. Uh, so I think I think that's actually going to be uh, pretty cool to see as well. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with both of you. And, and I think consistency is the best word. And, um, you know, as far as Dak, we talked about this last week last week having you know if they decided not to renew McCarthy or I guess go with his last uh, year on his deal that's three different systems he would have had to be under in the last three years and I think especially where he's at in his career expecting an older quarterback to continue to adjust that way yeah. is just not setting him up for success uh, and then the ripple effect it has on the rest of the offense so um, as far as you know another year of them working out the kinks of McCarthy being the play caller um, and what I really liked about his press conference when he talked about that is you know they went through everything already so when you think of things in terms of doing it the first time yeah. there are some kinks in it and and we saw that throughout the course of the season you, your your real turnaround time was the bye week and that's when things kind of um turned around and you know they they got fixed and adjusted but um you won't have to see that next season because they already know what is going to work for mm -hmm. them what is not and uh, I, I think the biggest thing i'm going to look for in this second year of the mccarthy offense is the run game i think that's mm -hmm. really one of the biggest questions i still have going into this season but overall i was for that move uh and i'm glad that he gets uh, another year Hopefully he can break that threshold. What are some things that you guys dislike about this move? Or not dislike, but just some, some cons. Yeah, I, I think it's more um, what's the definition of insanity, doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the naysayers and the critics are, you know, you, why do you want consistency when the same thing has happened where you get to the playoffs and then uh, have failure? Mm -hmm. And I think it's it's not just that the Cowboys lost in the first round um, this season, but the way they lost yeah. into an up-and-coming team that, you know, mm. that – and to be down 27 nothing. I mean, they're right. really – what excuses can you have yeah. for that? There, there aren't any. And so, um, to me, that's the biggest con. The other thing is, we're we're still not sure what's going to happen with uh, Dan Quinn in the defense. The yep. thing is, these uh, slots are yeah. are filling up. And this time of year, this coaching carousel of head coaches. It's, it's like a game of musical chairs. And so now these slots are filling up. You have Brian Callahan mm -hmm. uh, in Atlanta. Uh, now you got Harbaugh. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Callahan yeah. is with the Tennessee Titans. And then uh, multiple interviews for Belichick and others uh, in Atlanta, um, include Dan Quinn interviewed the there. So, mm -hmm. The commanders. So uh, you're still unsure, you know, this time next week, uh, hopefully Seahawks. we'll have some, yeah. we'll have some, some thin definitive to talk about <laughs> yeah. with the Cowboys defense and whether there'll be any <clears throat> changes on the coaching staff. But, uh, you know, remember, it's not just a, a coordinator that, mm -hmm. that is gone. Oftentimes the, the contracts are such that the it matches mm -hmm. so with uh if a coordinator were to leave how many uh, coaches would he take yep. with them mm -hmm. so it's not just a one for one <clears throat> sometimes you're replacing multiple spots and not only that but you look at the laundry list of the free agents that are mm -hmm. in the cowboys locker room come the off season a lot of those guys are the dan quinn guys really when you look at who is on that list they're the Dan Quinn guys that came in his first year that have followed him before that have a track record of following him where he's gone came from Atlanta coming here um he's just that kind of coach to these guys where where he goes they follow and so that kind of worries me as far as personnel is who could follow it's not just coaches it could also be personnel and uh we'll see hopefully this time next week we have a definitive answer yeah. that'd be nice to just know what's I think, going on I think what worries me is you talk about the laundry list of you know defensive guys there's there's quite a few offensive guys too mm -hmm. you know um especially with kind of like what you mentioned mentioned the run game you got Tony Paula Rico Dotto that's two guys right there um oh wow Eagles have also requested an interview with Kellen Moore for their OC job sheesh 
a lot of news going on <laughs> and, today. And, and they've uh, <laughs> got uh, Vic Fangio oh, for yeah. the defensive coordinator who uh, had been uh, had a mutual parting of the ways with uh, Miami mm. uh, earlier this week. So um, Sirianni keeps his job with the Eagles, <laughs> but they're going to have uh, a couple of new coordinators. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. very interesting. Yeah. Oh, sorry. My bad. I lost. Thank sorry. You. No, no, I, you're good. You're we good. were just talking no. about it. <laughs> no, you're good. Yeah, yeah we're talking about the run game yeah, and yeah. some of the different yeah. uh, free agents and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and guys moving on. Yeah, um, and and I say one of the cons for me is, I guess, kind of like piggybacking off what Christy said um, and the definition of insanity. But for me, it's more so of what is out there to help improve this offense. Sure. Um, and you have some guys that, like I said, you know, could be leaving. Um, they could possibly could possibly resign but I mean you don't want to expect the same thing that happened this past season um, as far as like the way that you guys went out so right. uh, it'll be interesting to see you know what how aggressive the guys uh, the the team is um, when it comes to the draft what they select in free agency um, as far as offensive uh, but now I mean talking about Dak we talked about I don't know if we did get a chance to talk about um, McCarthy staying um, but as far as you know how much trust that you can have in the fact that he is staying because mm-hmm. that's what Jane Slater asked um, in the press conference but more so moving to Dak Prescott how much trust do you guys have in him to be able to come back next year and take this team to a whole different level we got a chance to, I don't know if Jazzy has the sound yet we got a chance Ready. to hear from oh bet we can go ahead and play what uh, Troy Aikman sa- uh, said yesterday go ahead Jazzy uh, I still believe in Dak. I, I think that until you do it, there's there's always those criticisms. And I know Peyton maybe went through that his first three years. He didn't win a playoff game. And then you look back on it now, you can't imagine that anybody questioned whether or not he could win a playoff game. And- yeah, that was uh, Troy Aikman speaking this week at the George Bush Presidential Library. It was for a sports business journal naming uh, Dallas as the number one sports business yes. city. And so uh, that's why Troy was there. But he's right about until you do it, you know. Yeah. And and unfortunately, in something with, that we've talked about ad nauseum here on Girls Talk, Boys Talk is the standard here. You know, when you follow the Aikmans, when you follow the Starbucks. <coughs> Um, you know, it's the same thing that, that Tony Romo and, um, you know, Danny White following Roger Staubach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If, if it's not the Super Bowl, it doesn't matter what numbers you put up in the eyes of many Cowboy fans. Yeah. That's something that he also touched, um, and credit to Calvin Watkins, who was actually there. Um, he put it in quotations of what Troy Aikman also added about um, a sense of entitlement. This is what was said from Troy Aikman. I don't know about a sense of entitlement. I think that when you play for the Cowboys, every national show leads off with the Cowboys, and there's a lots of perks for playing with the Cowboys, a lot of benefits playing for the Dallas Cowboys. So I think the challenge for the organization and for the head coach is to be able to still keep the players with their edge, which is actually a kind of a good point there. Yeah. Uh, do you all think there's some, some truth to that? Well, yes, but I want to touch base mm-hmm. on what Christy said too of uh, what the standard is yeah. and it should be Super Bowls it, sh- it should be playoff wins and that's all viable what I do really like about McCarthy and kind of how he coaches this team is he tells them you're not responsible for anything that did not happen before us and so yeah in the last three years there has not been a success in playoff victory and so you can scrutinize that part of McCarthy but what I do like is that he doesn't put the pressure of the last 25 years 30 years on Dak to fix that because again there were predecessors that came after Roger Staubach that also didn't get it done that also still contributed to this dry spell that you've seen of Mm -hmm. not getting past the divisional round in the playoffs and so um, I I think as far as hearing from Troy that he still believes in Dak Mm -hmm. that should hold weight because he did get it done and given football was very different from when Troy played to now yeah but he's still an analyst. He's a color analyst, and he knows what the heck he's talking about. So I think if Troy Aikman can can sit there and say, hey, mm-hmm. Dak's still your guy. He can get it done. Who are we to argue with one of the greatest quarterbacks ever? Yeah. yeah. Well, the, I mean, and, really. Yeah. D- Troy's uh, greatest quote, and I think it puts everything in context, one of his greatest quotes, and this is back when he was playing. This was from back in the 90s. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it's always, oh, uh, uh, Dallas is such a great sports town. Huh? And Troy said, Dallas is a winner's town. Mm-hmm. 
they love you when you win. Yep. Mm. Right. And yep. of course, you can say that about about any community. Oh, it's yeah. amplified but, in Dallas. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you've seen yeah. it on Twitter. You've seen it everywhere on social media now. So yeah. No truth to that. It's so true. And you know. It also goes back, we were talking about the Bills kicker, and I don't know if you all saw that story trending about just him having to deactivate his social media because of the amount of hate he was getting after missing the field goal. No. Um, I, I just, it, it's so sad to see kind of this world we live in where social media takes over the human aspect of these guys. And yes, look, mm -hmm. the loss was bad enough. We don't have to be the first ones to tell the guys in the locker room that the <coughs> loss was embarrassing that it sucked being in the locker room after the game they knew that mm -hmm. it was very obvious um and you know after that locker room experience i had never been that was my first time Same. being in a locker room yeah. after that kind of loss and christy and i were talking right before and, and i told her i was like i don't know what to expect to go in here um i i really wish people would keep in mind and look yes you can be upset you can be mad that you have a very long off season with a very special team that should still be playing should still be preparing to get ready for a game this weekend you can be upset about that but also just remember these guys are human yeah. I, I mean the human aspect of this we talk about it all the time on this podcast yeah. there's no need to get personal there's no need to send them hateful messages and other really gross ugly <laughs> things that yep. um aren't even speakable yeah. i mean the fact that that is just such a common thing that these guys have to deal with really you know dallas but across the nfl just <laughs> urges me so much because at the end of the day yeah it's just football well you know but when tony romo <laughs> ap after after the playoff loss and tony romo oh, says yeah. if this is the worst thing that ever happens to me in my life then would have had a, a good life yeah. well they yeah. got crucified for that I, yeah. you know by yeah. some fans not not yeah. all i mean yeah. but it's hard to keep things in perspective when mm -hmm. losses are fresh but the thing about tyler bass getting all that vitriol this is the buffalo kicker that missed wide mm -hmm. right and it's what happened with scott norwood the kicker who missed it in the uh, super bowl in the 90s um for buffalo and the giants win the super bowl instead of the the bills wide right that is part of the lexicon mm -hmm. of the nfl and it's the two worst words in <laughs> buffalo bills fandom and then to miss wide right so what happens with tyler bass is what happens with these dallas cowboys mm -hmm. yeah. the current players that's the old saying paying for the sins of your fathers yep mm -hmm. yep well yep. yeah of course they're not their fathers but they're <laughs> You know, yeah. the, the mm -hmm. people that came before them. And so um, when you have um, the way that you lost in the first round and, and these these players feel the pressure, I'm to your point, I'm yeah. glad that Mike McCarthy says, hey, they're not responsible <coughs> yep. for that, but they have to live with it in terms yep. of yeah. the pressure that they feel from Cowboys They Nation. also have to fix it now yeah. because yes. You, yes. you are responsible for what has happened the last three years. That yeah. you are responsible for and you still haven't gotten it done. So I'm yeah. not saying there's not room to be upset sure. and emotional for the next long, long off season yeah. that we all have. But I'm just saying there's <clears throat> limits to how we channel that frustration everybody we yeah. don't have to send gross messages to players to channel frustration yeah. it's just weird do y'all think weird it's worse behavior. for the players or the coaches well i don't know how much the coaches actually see to be fair like M mike mccarthy's not on twitter that's true to to be getting the direct messages well, but you know? but his kids <laughs> Yeah, that, he, yeah, that's what Mike yeah. McCarthy talks yeah. about is, yeah. you know, it. he says, I can take it. He says, I don't like it when, you know, my kids have to deal yeah. that's fair. Uh, with this. <clears throat> and uh, I would say in some ways it's worse for the coaches yeah. because you can't fire all the players. Right. The salary cap and money, mm -hmm. there are constraints. You can't yeah. fire a whole team. That's why you get rid of staffs. Yeah. And so... You know, yeah, I, I feel bad for the coaches because usually yeah. they're the ones that are out the door. Yeah. Jordan Lewis, in the last day of the locker room, when they were doing locker room cleanup, he talked about Dak and Mike having the hardest jobs in America. Sure. And he, he said that. He said, the coach of the Dallas Cowboys and the quarterback have the hardest jobs in America and they get the most scrutiny. So mm -hmm. I, I think that was spot on. All right, well. On that note, we're going to take our first break. You're watching Girls Talk Voice Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. We'll be right back. <laughs> we know that juicy, cheesy, grilled-to-perfection burger sounds amazing, but it does sound like something is missing. 
Pepsi, baby. The yin to this burger's yang. Burgers and Pepsi go together like, well, like burgers and Pepsi. This perfect blending of flavors makes every bite of lettuce, every sesame seed on the bun, and every sip of that crisp, refreshing, ice-cold cola. A journey to Foodopia. Burgers, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. At Jigsaw Dating, we obviously want the Cowboys to bring that sixth ring home. But to be honest, we're more focused on finding the person who will put a ring on your finger. That's why we created a dating app that reveals your face through meaningful conversation. So you can date deeper. Because it's personality that matters the most, not looks. Join Jigsaw Dating today. Dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys fan of the year and now he needs your help vote for Sean to be given the ultimate title of the NFL fan of the year presented by Captain Morgan by casting your vote at nfl.com slash fan of the year shout out to Sean he followed me on Instagram the other day and I was like oh my goodness I know you you're famous yeah I got to give him a tour here of the star when he won Captain Morgan Savannah uh yeah was with us and uh great what a great guy and uh, go vote yeah. for him yeah go vote for him cool yeah i'd like to uh, welcome a, a special uh, <laughs> guest to girls talk boys talk Look this is cute. flat stanley who has Aww. joined us from ohio oh i love it from my niece brooklyn's third grade class at oh. tree of life in dublin Tra- <gasps> dublin ohio traveled over three thousand miles wow. to join us so, thank you for traveling uh, so far to join so us, flat stanley, stanley is so on honored. a cowboy adventure today and joins us for <laughs> girls talk boys talk glad to have stanley. you flat stanley glad to have you stanley. Stanley, what do you think about uh, this whole thing we were talking yeah. about? Yeah, well, He's uh, Flat, Flat Stanley, Flat <laughs> no Stanley is surrounded by a lot of uh, Bengals, Browns, and even some oh, some Steelers yeah. fans. That would but make sense. But there are still a lot of uh, very uh, devoted Cowboy fans mm. in Ohio, including the Nicholson family. So well, there you Brooklyn go. and Brianna and their friends at Tree of Life. Oh. Well, there you go. And shout out for Stanley for being right. so loyal. <laughs> I think we used to draw crowd. a Flat Stanley when I was younger. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I've never heard of a flat Stanley. Really? Yeah. They, I've definitely heard of flat go. Stanley before. They're cute. He's Dang, cute. I like crazy. him. So I have some uh, trivia for you right, for some playoff right, trivia, let's go. okay? I love trivia. So, yes, I watch Family trivia. Feud every day. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Really? Yeah. That's Dang. what. Yeah, that's what we fall asleep watching <laughs> every night. It's like clockwork. <laughs> Matt and I are like, time to turn on Family Feud. <laughs> We're such I old people. See. I didn't tell her that. I was shocked that she said that that's what she watches to go to sleep. Okay. So, so let's talk about how it's things how working. things work in the NFL for the playoffs. So okay. uh, let's take how much players get paid. Okay? So okay. we had round one, Cowboys, uh, Packers. Mm-hmm. Why did the Cowboys players get paid more for playing in the round one, play, a wild card round, than the Packers players? I mean, the Packers won. And why would one team get paid more, and how much did they get paid? Um, say would you like to take a guess? It's it's a yeah. what happens is in the NFL once you get to the playoffs, there are different amounts for each round, and it's a flat payment, hmm. just like Stanley flat. <laughs> Everyone gets paid the same the thing. Players. The players okay. get paid the same <laughs> amount. Um, I'm gonna hmm. say because they had higher seating. Because yeah. they were division winners, right? Right. Okay. So, okay. so if you if you were a division winner, uh, you for playing in round one, fifty thousand five hundred dollars each player on the team. Dang. Okay. Uh, if you were if you, if, if you were a practice squad player, you did get your weekly practice squad check of twelve thousand yeah. dollars. So as long as you keep going in the playoffs and you have uh, practices leading into the next round, practice squad players get paid their practice Wait, squad checks. Wait, let me checks. get this right. So. Each player mm-hmm. on the Cowboys roster got paid fifty thousand dollars for the first fifty thousand five hundred dollars for playing in the wild card round. And the Packers players, because they were the wild card mm-hmm. uh, entry mm-hmm. and not one yeah. of the division winners, they got paid five thousand dollars less. <gasps> Forty-five thousand five hundred dollars. Oh my goodness. Now, ultimately, the the <laughs> that Packers the, pa- the, the, the Packers came out ahead. <laughs> Packers came out ahead because they advanced to the divisional round. In the divisional round, everyone, all players get paid the same amount in the divisional round. 
whether you're a wild card entry or division winner, okay. you get paid fifty thousand five hundred dollars. So the Packers players they were eliminated wow. after round two, so one hundred and one thousand dollars, fifty thousand five hundred for two games. For two Dang. games, okay. So now for the conference championship <laughs> game, where let's say that uh, so crazy. we've got what. Detroit, yeah. right, is yeah. hosting. Yeah. So the, the four teams, uh, actually eight teams, uh, no, four teams. Okay, in the conference championship games, $73,000 per player. Okay, so all of those oh. players. And then if you make the Super Bowl, you're back to a difference. If you win, if you're on the winning team, it's $164,000 if you win. If you're on the losing team, eighty-seven thousand, eighty-nine thousand dollars. So there's a discrepancy so there. So roughly two hundred something thousand dollars. Well, depending if you play you all put, four, yeah. Ra- yeah, yeah, if yeah. you play uh, all four rounds, and if it's, you it's won more, it's more than that. Higher it's seating and it's all uh, that. over three. It's about three hundred and seventy if you win and all that. Now, That's here's the thing: enough to go to the playoffs. Sheesh. Well, that that sounds like a lot of money, right? Hey, to me, taxes. No, no to. <laughs> No, here's the thing. To me, if I were in the players' union, this would be the one thing that I would would change because yeah. fifty thousand dollars is a lot of money, yeah. isn't it? It's I mean, per, that's that's per person on on the team. A, yeah, yeah. That, so, that's that's, that's a lot of money. But what if I'm pick pick a player for uh, the Cowboys? Or Jordan let's Lewis, see. go. Okay, Jordan Lewis. Let me find his. I was like, his, who's on uh, the wall over here? Okay, let let me get uh, Jordan Lewis's base salary. So give me a moment. Oh, wait. It's Tyler Jordan Lewis. Oh, I think it's. Uh, okay, well, Dak, uh, what is Dak's base salary? Look on there for Spotrack for. 29,000? Uh, 29 million, I'm sorry. Yeah, but, oh, so look, I, but what's his. Sorry. So his salary, that's his salary. I need his base salary, not his I'm sorry, my for the year. not working. Mm-hmm. Yeah, base salary. Base salary is 29, 29 million. million. Okay, mm-hmm. so 29 million divided by 18 games is $1.61 million. So Dak Prescott gets paid $1.61 million in base salary per game. You work all year and you make it to the playoffs and your paycheck is $50,500. Oh, I see where you're going with this. So it's kind of, hear me out though. (laughs) An extra $50,000, I'm going out there and get this win. I mean, fifty thousand dollars is fifty thousand dollars. You know what same. I'm saying? Yeah. But I also <clears throat> see like, why is it a pay cut? Why it's a pay cut? Yeah. Compared yeah. to what they're making, but that's when the def- ratings are higher, more people mm, are watching. Yeah, yeah. That's true. You know, I don't think that they discount the. Um, I al- uh, th- I don't think they discount parking and and um, concessions, do they? I mean, everyone's paying. <laughs> I don't so, know. It's expensive. It's that's still. Crazy. Um, I. <sighs> That's so interesting. I'd be interested to compare that to somebody that obviously doesn't get paid as much as Dak. Okay. Dak gets well, let's, obviously let's, more let's money. Let's do that. Here. Okay, let's do it. Donovan Wilson. If you're if you're a rookie, Dono. if you're a rookie, oh, there, there are minimum base there salaries. There are minimum base salaries in uh, the NFL. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if you are a rookie and you're on the 53 man roster, your minimum base salary is seven hundred and fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So if you divide that by 18 weeks, okay. it is $41,666. So for a rookie making the minimum, so Brandon yeah. Aubrey, mm-hmm. let's say Brandon yeah. Aubrey. Yeah. For Brandon Aubrey, playing in that playoff game, it meant a lot. Butter, yeah. Butter actually got a raise. <laughs> butter made an extra uh, $1,000, basically. Okay. Then, then he would have if it were a regular season. Well, does game. it count because he's technically not considered a rookie in the NFL? Actually, that is uh, an interesting question because Brandon Aubrey, according to NFL, in terms of like records mm-hmm. and stuff, because he would be an all-time rookie record holder as yep. an NFL kicker. Yep. But because he has experience in a previous pro league, USFL, yeah. the league is contending that. Uh, that Brandon Aubrey is in fact not a rookie, but a first year player. Mm -hmm. Yet, Mm. Brandon Aubrey is paid the rookie minimum of $750,000 instead of the first year minimum of $870,000. So there's a discrepancy (laughs) there. The math isn't mathing. 
oh, I have a headache. This, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> you know, oh, it's a Thursday morning. I should have told everyone to bring their uh, bring their calculators Ma'am, today. My mom's a math teacher. Wait, so what, <laughs> so what about episode. what about Mozzie Smith? His base salary is one point three million. Yeah. So okay, so we divide that by. So you take one point three one one point three million. By 18? And divide it by 18, and it's $72,222. $72, so Mozzie took a $22,000 pay cut to pay in the pl- play in the playoffs. But to mm. your, but you're right. It's $50,000 I mean, $50, more than you, than you had before. That's what so, I'm saying. Yeah. That's extra mm-hmm. money that you had before to put in your bank account. Mm-hmm. But, that, that, but that's that's how, that's how it works okay, in the NFL. Let me go suit up real quick. The, 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 the point is to keep playing. I told you to let me go kick over here. Let me have running back. I, mean, I won't give kidding. Brandon Aubrey any run for his money at all. But I just. <laughs> it is interesting though that once you get to the Super Bowl, the winning yeah. team, it's basically double, right? Yeah. And then the Crazy. same the same thing holds for the Pro Bowl, even though the Pro Bowl isn't a true right. yeah. game anymore right. like it used to be. So, um, let's see. That's is so that the same interesting. every year? Hundred, excuse me. No, no it, it raises uh, a little bit each year. So, yeah. for okay. example, uh, last year would have been say like thirty-eight thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and then uh, com- compared to uh, forty thousand. Yeah. So what was it back in the day, like in the sixties? Oh, like five thousand dollars. I mean, yeah. but money value was different, yeah, different back yeah. then mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, Sheesh. we're gonna take our second break. You're watching Girls Talk Boys Talk presented by Jigsaw, some... the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. I'm gonna we'll be right sleep back. my headache now. That was a lot of money. At Jigsaw Dating, we obviously want the Cowboys to bring that sixth ring home. But to be honest, we're more focused on finding the person who will put a ring on your finger. That's why we created a dating app that reveals your face through meaningful conversation so you can date deeper. Because it's personality that matters the most, not looks. Join Jigsaw Dating today, dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. You know that sound anywhere. It's the crisp crunch of that first nacho chip. With its perfect cheese to sour cream ratio sitting atop a layer of delicious beans, it's a sip away from perfection. That's what we're looking for. Add a delicious, refreshing Pepsi and we've achieved absolute nacho nirvana. Because while you can pile those nachos high with every spicy, cheesy, savory topping, there's no topping a cool Pepsi finish. Nachos, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. East West Shrine Bowl will feature 130 of the nation's top NFL draft prospects on Thursday, February 1st at the Star in Frisco. Tickets are as low as $20 and are available at ShrineBowl.com. Proceeds benefit Shriners Children's. Please. Um, real go quick, if you up, can. Real, cool. my bad. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, real quick good. update, lady, or uh, Cowboys Nation. Uh, Dax. Oh. Base <laughs> salary is for 2023, 1.7. 2024. It's twenty nine million. Yeah. So the so the one point seven million. So uh, for each game, his base salary Mm -hmm. this past year was just over ninety four thousand dollars, and then fifty thousand five hundred for the wild card playoff game. The highest base salary was Tony Pollard. All of his money was put in the base salary because he was franchise franchise tagged. So um, yeah. So even though. Uh, Dak counted uh, 27 million this past year against the salary cap mm-hmm. with all of the restructuring bonuses yeah. and signing bonus yeah. and all of that. His base was 1.7 million. There yeah. We, go. Uh, we have a few questions. <laughs> the number one question is, what gets excited about the upcoming off season? Who's that? That was On Oscar. Hi, Oscar. Oscar. Hi. Shouties. Hmm. Oscar's very loyal. Anytime uh, I would tweet anything but bland, he was ready he with his it. response. We love and it that. was the same. So love shout that. out. Um, well, there's so much to build us. on. Yeah. Right. There you and go. I think uh, the continuity yeah. of the offense is something to look forward to. Um, I think getting CD mm-hmm. signed to an extension is something to look forward to. Yeah. Um, I think the improvement is the the run game is something to really look forward to. It's just that. 
it's cloudy right yeah. now because Tony Pollard being a free agent, uh, Rico, Rico Dowdle's Tony. restricted, and then with Tyler Biotish and Tyron Smith may be a very different looking line um, right. yeah. in the in the next year. So um, I think that that's going to be a big emphasis is uh, improving the run game. I think that uh, having continuity on special teams and Brandon Aubrey coming back mm -hmm. is a is a huge thing, and defense. Yeah. Boy, so many uh, questions there in terms of what yeah. you're going to do. There's, I think, there's going to be a lot of changes in the in the defensive backfield yep. mm -hmm. with guys like uh, J. Ron and yeah. uh, Curse and Stephon Gilmore, mm -hmm. uh, Jordan Lewis, free agents yeah. there. Uh, but I think uh, improving the linebacker core is mm -hmm. something to really look forward yeah. to because yeah. the because the injury to Leighton Vander Esch <clears throat> was just. The killer brutal. blow. Yeah. It was a brutal blow, and um, I, I'm when you say most excited about. To me, I would say for me, it's more like intriguing and curious about. Mm. That's that's mm -hmm. what I'm gonna. Or yeah. what, what what am I gonna be focused on? Sure. Yeah. And I would phrase it that way and that's what I'm going to be looking at I think it's also guys coming back from injury so that's obviously mm -hmm. Trayvon Diggs went out mm -hmm. prior to week three in practice with a freak ACL tear um, him coming back and being able to yeah. kind of reestablish that and build off of the year that he was supposed to have this season if not for that injury DeMarvian Overshone yes, another absolutely. guy you can be so excited about yeah. from what you saw in the preseason uh, ahead of his injury John Stevens Jr. on the offensive side of the ball who Great had name. such Great good name. flashes during training <laughs> yes. camps that yeah. we were so excited about is he a tight end is he a wide receiver is he a both we don't know yeah. uh, but again you have these really talented guys uh, coming back from injury and and those I think with DeMarvian Overshone and um Obviously, Leighton Van Der Esch being out, uh, impacting the linebacker core, uh, had a big ripple effect on the linebackers this year, to your point, Christy. So um, having guys come back from injury that were projected to have really big seasons mm -hmm. and getting them through – um, the hardest part of their injury and getting them back on the field is something I'm excited about personally. I'd say seeing, knowing that this team is so close, you know, just so close, like Christy mentioned, the 12-5 and five seasons, um, Back to back, three straight seasons, 12 win seasons. I'm sorry. Uh, you, you talk about the talent that this team has, the talent that there's out there, um, and of course, this is my first NFL offseason, so I'm excited to see um, the the way that or the different players that come in. Yeah. Um, you know that could add to this new offense, or you know if they maintain the same guys that they keep um just seeing the, how they fit in um even defensive guys the new guys that we could possibly see come in as well uh so i think i mean that's what that's what makes it fun about the nfl offseason you really don't know it's it's really yeah. about the unknown but with knowing that this team was so close you know um it, it, it'll be interesting to see how much more and how much fun it'll be to see how much um uh, how much closer they can mm. get to possibly like an nfc championship game yeah um, so i think that's that's kind of yeah, it's going to be interesting. Even look at this time last year. You had no mm -hmm. idea this time last year you'd have a Brandon Cooks. Yeah. You had no idea you'd have a Stephon Gilmore. Yeah. You just had, you had no idea you'd have a Brandon Aubrey. I mean, there's so much That's unknown. True. And uh, Christy always talks about the retention mm -hmm. and, and the changes that come in the offseason uh, between trades, free agency, everything, about 20%, yeah. 20, 20 to 25. 20 to 25%. Um, mm -hmm. Being changes. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing and no. you can have a lot of really great additions to this team so i'm trying to really have the glass half full here because we got <laughs> through the emotional couple of weeks together and yeah. we had our therapy session on here <laughs> but um look there's just you're also building off of a really talented roster and i think that's why the loss was so disappointing because yes. of the talent that you had already built on this team that's still going to be there maybe not all of it yeah. But there's also going to be new additions that could help as well. Yeah. What was your favorite surprise of the season? That's a good one. And it doesn't That's have to a be a player. One. It could be, you know, what, what, or or something, something or someone that exceeded your expectations. Okay. Dang, I have to go my, first. My, I'm gonna my, go my, Dak. I'm gonna go Dak. Okay. Um, because I came in. I think it was. I think it was the 49ers game. It was. That was it was your the first 49ers week. game. That was my first <laughs> week. And I was like, hmm, okay. I don't know. Well, nowhere to go but up. Rocky. Yeah. It's just like, well, <laughs> dang. Nowhere to go but up. I was like, okay. Dang. Hmm, it's a little rocky. Rough week over here. Rough week for my first <laughs> week. Uh, but just seeing, you know, his improvements and the way that 
his instincts have changed. His reads have been have gotten so much better. Granted, of course, I know fans don't want to hear this because of the way they went out, um, and pretty much no one showed up that Sunday. But I mean, come on, like Dak showed that he's he's a top QB in the NFL, and I think since that game, he really showed that. Um, yeah. So that, I'd say that's probably my my biggest surprise. Oh man! Yeah, that one's hard. I don't. I'm... Biggest surprise. I'm gonna I'm gonna veer a little bit here. I'm gonna say for me being my first year actually covering the team mm-hmm. and being able to do that. Um, my biggest surprise was getting through it and and uh, <laughs> fighting through the burnout because it was hard. So personally, that was my biggest surprise. It was really it's yeah. a lot and and I think uh, yeah, just learning through that. But as far as the team. I mean, I got to go with the obvious yes, here, guys. Yes, absolutely. Like, yeah. look, if you knew me. It's written uh, across your heart uh, right here, and mine as well. Butter. Next to butter. the heart. Um, oh, my goodness. Butter. If, uh, Nicole, I really wish you knew me before uh, the whole Brandon Aubrey thing started, because during training camp, Christy can attest all last year, all I nagged about was the kicking situation and how firm I was in wanting to keep Brett Maher on the roster. I didn't agree even after his uh, incident in the playoffs last year, yeah. I was very firm on wanting to keep a stable kicker. And that was fear talking because I didn't know mm. what was ahead. Uh, and then in comes Brandon Aubrey randomly during training camp. Everyone's like, who is this guy? He used to play soccer. And he did not have a great training camp. Yeah. I mean, every time you saw tweets uh, about Brandon Aubrey, it was like, oh, he missed two today. Oh, he <laughs> missed three today. He never had a perfect day at training camp, I think yeah. maybe except once. So in my head, I'm sitting here on the podcast real smug, like, here we go with another kicking situation. And then all of a sudden, yeah, here comes Brandon Aubrey pr- proving everybody but myself wrong. I will happily, 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 happily admit that I was wrong about Brandon Aubrey, and that was the best surprise I could have asked for all season. Being a kicking queen and loving a good stable kicker, yeah. Brandon Aubrey was such a fantastic find uh, by the scouting department here. John Fossil had a hand in it in uh, finding him in the USFL. Just such a great story. Yeah. He wasn't even supposed to ever kick again, much less in the NFL. He was a software engineer that kind of just was inspired by his wife to come and try. Fantastic story. Fantastic guy. Fantastic player. That was my biggest surprise, was seeing just a historic mm-hmm. season from uh, Butter. And shout out yeah. to Haley Sutton, former team reporter, my big sis. She actually was <laughs> the one Haley. who... Um, I guess predicted that he'd have a pretty solid season. She did. Yeah. 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 She yeah, did. So. She was adamant. We were arguing with her about it. We were like, Haley, girl, yeah. are you not seeing what's going on in training camp right now? And yeah. she's like, former soccer player here. Mm-hmm. Trust me. Yeah. 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 And uh, it's interesting because uh, uh, Rich Basaccia, who is the Packers special mm-hmm. teams coordinator, but he was here several years and, and friends with Rich and his family and his daughter, Maddie, who worked here for the Cowboys and had a great conversation with uh, Rich before. For the uh, wild card game yeah. and and he said make sure you give Henry Shroka uh, a pat on the back and some love and recognition for um, all the work that he does in looking for kickers and mm. uh, recognize his part of bringing in Brandon Aubrey as well yeah. so shout out to, to Henry and I agree uh, yeah. butter Brand- Brandon Aubrey is my most pleasant surprise there you, so, go. you bet I'm just obsessed with this shirt. If you no, see me around town, thank, thank, thank you, Jazzy. Yes, Thanks, Jazzy. Shout Jazzy. out to our producer for these shirts. If you right. see me around town today doing this, just ignore me. Just what are you going to do? do? I'm going to walk around. <laughs> I'm not by my mic, so I'm going to walk around. And you're just going to see me like. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> we need video proof. We need evidence. I'll do it right now. I'm going to walk okay. out here like that. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah, stay well, tuned. That is a wrap <laughs> for this week's episode of Girls Talk, Boys Talk. We'll see you all next week. Bye, guys. (laughs) This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?